Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour. I'm joined as always by my lovely, wonderful co-host, Alexander Volz. Say hello. What? Okay. <laughs> this is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen every single album in the world, one artist at a time. It is a new discography for the most part, uh, every episode. And today we are talking about the birthday party. Yes. 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 I'm excited. I fucking love this band. I'm very excited. I didn't leave this. Like we've been hanging out for a good minute setting up. I did not leave. I did not give any just, hint. Just went into it. Coming in hot. Didn't give you any, any hint that I was excited for this episode. I feel like the group chats have been uh, sassy and, and filled with paranoia. So this will be, this will be an interesting. Uh, this is the most. And we, we just did dead Kennedy's last week and that we thought that was a paranoid band. This is the most paranoid band of all fucking time. It's, it's a uh, crazy, crazy world of uh, Nick Cave and the birthday party. Amazing. And uh, before we get into all that, uh, plugs, because I, did, I forgot to do it at the beginning last time. I don't really oh, that, care. Yeah, you're, I, co- you're coming in hot and heavy. Dude, real quick. Who too. gives a shit? You know what? Fuck plugs. We're not going to do it yet. We're going to do it at the end of the episode. We're going to do it at the yeah, end. Because if you're coming here to listen to us talk about music, that's exactly what we're going to do. God damn. Damn it. And also, I'm pent up because at the time of this recording, we are fucking quarantined. <laughs> the world knows what the hell is happening. When by the time this releases, who knows what it's gonna be like? Who knows? From dead Kennedys till now, it escalated so quickly. It so. went from zero to ten. Well, we're not ten. To, to be fair, we are still allowed to leave our homes because I'm not at my home currently. Uh but you know, restaurants are shut down, bars and gyms are shut down, anything, all every single live event has been canceled. Yep. Oh, I'm only seeing close friends and no no public gatherings. It's, no public gatherings. Also, I don't hang out with people. I see you and like two other people ever. So it's weird. Like uh I'd probably be doing the same shit under normal circumstances, but when there's a uh, sense of anxiety and dread and that you really don't have an option, it yeah. it feels worse. It's what it is. It's not the, the fear of the Rona as people are calling it. It is the lack of freedom. It is saying, Hey, you're not allowed to go outside. I know it's for your own good. Sure. But you're still not allowed. And that's, that's, that's anxious. P- yeah. That's not a good feeling. And people are, animals so you just don't know what state yeah the world is going to be being and uh yeah and in, in ugh, man we've had significantly worse viruses like significant like within our lifetimes but this one is it's not worse like it's, I just said, it's, it's it's the unknown and well also it's the fucking news man the way they're wording shit it's so fucking it's like Oh man, dude, H1N1. I'm only going to say that. It was so much worse. I, it was so much worse. A billion people infected, 500,000 deaths. Yeah. And who remembers when it happened? Fucking no one. Whatever, you know. Exactly. We're here to talk about music. Exactly. But we're also, world. we're trapped though. That's, that's a, we have nothing to do except think about shit. You know, and fucking I, play video games and listen to music. And I make cra- crazier than my normal social media posts. Like uh, I just made a collage of uh, Paddington, Orange Cassidy, and then uh, my my nieces and, and nephews. Uh, I think Orange Cassidy is a professional wrestler, the greatest of all time. I'm not even a big wrestling guy, but I fucking love him. Orange Cassidy, if you need some joy in your life, just look up Orange Cassidy clips on YouTube. Like you don't even need to watch his matches. You can just like watch like 15 no, seconds highlights. and he'll put a smile it's on It's just your comedy. Face. It's comedy. It's fucking hilarious. Slapstick. Yeah. Uh, Buster Keaton style stuff. Fucking it's great, real good, timeless. Uh, and then yeah, if you need a w- smile, please watch the Paddington movies. <laughs> I believe the world would be a better place if everyone watched the Paddington movies. They're real good. <laughs> they're so heartwarming and they're so honest without being full of shit, which is so hard to do. Yeah. Uh, plus, anytime you see Hugh Grant in a role that's not sleazy. Oh yeah, hell yeah, Hugh Grant is the villain in two and is great. And Nicole Kidman is the villain in the first one. And she's awesome. Fucking like hot as hell. Like there's a scene where she's like knocking on a phone booth to try to use the phone. And the guy's like, I can't be bothered. And then he turns around and locks eyes with her. And it's just like 
slow motion Lionel Richie. Hello. Yeah. Is it me? Like, it's so funny. It's so funny. Or like uh, when they lose Paddington and they're telling the cops about it and they're describing him and the mom's like, and he's a bear and the cop taking the notes is like, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, could you be a little more descriptive, please? It's. <laughs> I love how I deliberately skip plugs so we can go right into the band and we just start talking about Paddington. <laughs> the world, the world needs it. Be kind and polite. Wait, hold on. You're going to look up the quote? What Aunt, Aunt Lucy says. So this is the, okay, while you're looking up that, uh, this is the worst band to listen to when you're anxious of dying. Like, this is, what, if you haven't heard of the birthday party, it's, if you haven't heard of Nick Cave, for one, listen to Nick Cave. This was Nick Cave's band before uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Uh, if you're, this is weird because. If you're kind and polite, the world will be right. Okay. All right. Good the, words to live by. If it fit around my my uh, belly button like Tupac Thug Life style. Oh, that would be. I would do it. Extremely and, gangster. And the gothic font. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the old English. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, so Nick Cave is a legend. He's one of my favorite vocalists of all time. He's very famous and he's got a very. He's, like, he's, he's gone through every genre known to man pretty much. Almost. Like his so his solo career is more prolific than the birthday party. Well, his solo he's had like a million solo albums. He just released one last year. It was on my best albums of 2019 list, and it's really, he's a singer. He's mellow. There's a lot of piano. He's, he's a Renaissance man. Yeah, man. If I see, I think that's how I got into Nick Cave. Actually, was uh, the movies he'd be like associated. Yeah, with. he did a lot. Of, he does a lot of film scores. Uh, especially now with uh, his writing partner, Warren Ellis slash violinist uh, before that him, it used to be Mick Harvey who was in the birthday party, but we'll get into more details, but uh, Nick Cave is so accessible. Well, Nick Cave in the bad seeds is so accessible that my fucking mom times. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of the time though, my mom likes Nick Cave. That's how accessible the birthday party is the, Oh my God. Uh, polar opposite. So, my, I was introduced to the birthday party when I was like 12 or no, no, 13, I believe probably 13. And I knew of Nick cave as Nick cave. And then I, uh, I remember, I distinctly, I remember my brother sent me to go buy the album for him. Cause I was like at Amoeba records mm -hmm. area and he wasn't there. He's like, get this one, this album. And I was, I, so I was snooping around <clears throat> on like looking at the album, like waiting in line. And I saw in the back, Nick Cave vocalist. I was like, wait a minute. The pretty piano Nick Cave? Wait, why does my brother want this? He doesn't like pretty music. Wait, what's happening? And then I heard the album and oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Insane. Insane. If you like the birthday party, you're probably fucked up in the head. For sure. Probably. Um, yeah, so I did it a weird way. I watched that movie, The Proposition, and I loved it so much. Oh, really? You saw... Wait, that's how you were introduced in the cave? Yeah, because I love The Proposition so much. Great movie. And then... Um, and he wrote the movie and, of course, the score. And that's, like... That's mm. how, like, I started. Interesting. Wait, what year did that come out? Uh, oh, oh, five. Oh, five. Uh, that's a good-ass movie. Um, I, so good. If... If, yeah, and this is related to it. Yeah, if if you guys haven't seen The Proposition, please. Yeah, it's a, it's a Western. It's an Australian Western. Uh, Nick Cave, of course, Australian man. Uh, but uh, what was I going to say? Shit, I fucking forgot. We're going to say Foster's Australian for beer. Ugh, it's an awful beer. I actually don't even like beer, but that's really bad. Uh, well, we're talking about Australians. Uh, shout out to Alf Stewart. Who? The, the rape dungeon guy. Oh, what? What are you talking about? The the <laughs> the guy on the soap opera. It's home and away. Oh, see, you're throwing out plugs at or, or polls that no one in the fucking world would ever get. I didn't even get it. And you showed me like last week. Because I feel insane and I want people to. It's like this show. Um, <laughs> fucking. Uh, I, I completely lost my train of thought. Um, We're going to call someone a bloody. Don't. Guy. No, no. God damn it, Alex. You can't. Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> birthday party. Uh, so I've been, uh, yeah, I'm a, a, I'm a long time fan of the birthday party and they're, they're, they, uh, so, uh, 
I, I completely lost myself. I lost it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm quarantined. Yeah. I'm done. I'm dead. Yeah. And no, we're not alive anymore. And go Hold on. on. Yeah. So Nick Cave, Mick Harvey, and Phil Calvert formed a band, a band mm-hmm. in uh, 1973. And then. Uh, 1973? Yeah. They, Jesus they Christ. Knew each other they in like, a million years old? They knew each other in like uh, it's school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Middle school, elementary school. Take your pick. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. I got this like bootleg thing of like rarities and B-sides and that has uh, some of the first two songs they recorded, Sex Crimes, Masturbation Nation, and then... Wonderful, t- wonderful song titles. Roland S. Howard comes in 78. Roland S. Howard, yeah. Who is one of the most underrated guitar players ever. He's very fucking interesting. I have problems with the guy, but he's real interesting. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then we're kind of off to the races. And uh, before we get into it, I will say, like, uh, researching it, it's very interesting how, like, um, when you're on on Genius, the the lyric site where the stuff yeah. is annotated, uh, a lot of these lyrics, like, Nick Cave kind of comes back to, not in, like, wholeheartedly, like, ripped off, but... Like, uh, like George Lucas says, it's like poetry and it has to rhyme, uh, but Nick cave does it in a more eloquent. He's a brilliant writer. I remember what I was going to say, by the way, when I got all fucking brain dead, uh, I was going to bring up his writing because he has a couple books out. I, I have both, but I only read one of them. Mm-hmm. I think it was uh, called the death of Bunny, Mon- Bunny Monroe. It's like really fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Really like, entertaining. Like, uh, I f- didn't write down what book it was, but in, uh, I'll just say this real quick in, in the song Swampland, like yeah. the premise for the book came out of yeah, that's, that uh, song. Uh, and the asshole, the angel. Yeah. He was uh, sheltered away high as fuck writing this book, uh, like complete recluse. Uh, he was in, like in this weird tumultuous relationship with some girl from Australia. Uh, and he was writing this, this big epic, <clears throat> which ended up being and the ass and the asshole, the angel. Uh, a lot of drugs were involved for the most part. Oh Yeah. I haven't finished the book. It's really hard to read. It's written in a way that has like all these dialects and, and accents. And I fucking hate reading accents. I oh, absolutely dude. hate it. Yeah. I think it's Grant. Yeah. Grant Morrison does that a lot. He's yeah. a comic book writer. And yeah, he writes like phonetically. Yeah. And I it's, fucking hate it. It's man. just sort of, like, I can just imagine an accent. Let me imagine. Just tell me the accent and I'll imagine it. Yeah. It's so much harder to like sit there and like, f- w- like mouth it out. Like, uh, Shadow over Innsmouth, the Lovecraft story, which like is my favorite Lovecraft story, mm-hmm. but it was like a fucking four pages of that phonetic accent bullshit. Oh, yeah. and it's so yeah. yeah, it's garbage. Uh but uh Anyways. yeah, he has, he's a good writer and lyrically, I think I I'm, I've mentioned this countless times in the past. I'm not a big lyric guy, but Cave's lyrics are fucking remarkable. He's such a good writer. Uh in more recent years, I would say less so. <laughs> Uh, for the the album Push the Sky Away, man, those lyrics are rough. Are they? Dude, they're dumb as fuck. I, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was reading. But like, damn, let love in no, the- and fucking, you know, uh, Tender Prey and Your your Funeral, My Trial, like all those albums, amazing writing. Yeah. Does your mom listen to Stager Lee? Uh, no, <laughs> that's also not even his song. It's like a cover. I, it is but, a cover, but damn, the, what the, a cover. The Bad Seeds cover of that is the best version. It's the best version. So I'm a bad motherfucker called Stagger Lee. Stagger Lee. Fucking awesome. Well, there's something about Cox too. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm not, yeah. It's something about, yeah, fucking a boy, a fat boy's asshole. That, that's literally a lyric, <sighs> a, literally a lyric in there. Uh, so let's start. I guess we've been dilly-dallying so, for a fucking while. So now, oh wait, I know I was gonna say before we before going to it. You said this about Roland S. Howard. I think Mick Harvey is one of the most underrated musicians of all time. Yeah, not even guitar players because he was a one of the main writers for the Birthday Party, and he doesn't. He's so understated. Mm-hmm. He doesn't fucking talk ever. He never does anything except write the best songs. And then for the Bad Seeds, he was. Nick Cave's writing partner for the for up until maybe like 10, 15 years ago, something like that, when he left. Actually, I don't remember when he left, which year exactly, but it was fairly recently. 
he was responsible for all of the bad seed stuff that I love. Mm -hmm. like everything about the bad seeds that I love. Nick Cave is great. I love his voice. I love his writing. Mick Harvey is musically the reason they were great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think he gets nearly enough love or attention ever. <clears throat> you were going to say before I cut you off. Also right now they're called the boys next door. They started out as the boys next door. Yeah. Before changing their name and moving to England. So, so yeah, this shit's like on, on YouTube. I, but we'll, we'll get yeah, into this. It's, it's real complicated because, okay. So this is one of the more convoluted discographies that we're doing. I don't think it is. Cause well, the way uh, they've been re-released is more digestible, mm -hmm. but the way it was originally released is way different. So, uh, Technically, they have four albums and three EPs, but they've been condensed into like, like not compilations, kind well, they're kind of compilations. Two comps. Two comps, but they've- One a, album under a different band name. Okay. So- That's all, that's all it is. The thing is, uh, the, the song order, I think in Hee Haw, is like oh, rearranged. It's backwards, yeah. Yeah. And it it's under the name The Birthday Party, but it was released as The Boys Next Door. Yep. Uh, so, okay. So- we're going to be talking about five albums. There are like maybe we'll take you a mostly chronological order. Yes. And there's like a bonus tracks and other stuff put onto them, but there's no other versions you can find. So like the, the actual canonical releases album, studio albums, there's songs on there that weren't on the original, but these are the only versions you can find. So we're going to be talking about all the streaming versions and all the versions that, that are possible. Cause yeah, this is a weird band. <laughs> Weird band. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Yes, this finally. 1979, Door Door. Playing this off YouTube, cut me some slack. <laughs> Is it playing? Oh. I was not ready for this album. I was uh, really... This is the only birthday party album I haven't heard before this. Mm -hmm. I was expecting to fucking hate it. I was expecting to really hate it. It has all the makings of something that's supposed to be terrible. Yeah. And it's not. I disagree. <laughs> I like I like it a lot. Let's, let's listen to it. So this sounds like a lot of shit I've heard before. Like post-punk, pop-punk of the you know late 70s. Mm-hmm. So all the shit we were saying about them being insane We sound like liars This is so normal We're gonna get there Okay, so without a doubt, worst Like not even a question This is Damn, son. easy worst for me um, My god, this isn't the birthday party This it's, isn't even It's close. not the birthday party, but I still like it It's more like Gang of Four or Roxy music It is but worse. Uh, it, it, I don't think it's bad at all. This do, has all the makings for a shit show. Like it's not uh, pressed anymore or released. Not streaming. We have it's to not streaming. Yeah. yeah Got to go on YouTube. Um, and they, yeah. No one really talks about it. No. And then, so I was expecting something awful mm -hmm. and I was just like pleasantly. So I, I, I don't hate this the way I thought I was going to hate it, mm -hmm. but I sure should don't like it. Uh, aside from uh, Dive Position and I Mistake Myself, which are both really fucking good, mm -hmm. uh, every song either pisses me off or just I just forgot what it is. I just completely forgettable, bored. I just, I really like Friends of the World. How dare you? I like the guitars. Oh, how dare you? I like Who the guitars on that. Quarantine somewhere else. All right. How dare you? It's a very triumphant guitar sound to me and licks. Uh, I, please tell me you don't like Shivers. Shivers is okay. Oh, it's fucking garbage. <laughs> I fucking hate it. It's so... Like, to oh. this day, Nick Cave still does that song. It's Really? Yeah. Oh, like, I didn't even know that. Like, it's... Uh, Roland Howard wrote it when he was 16, which probably explains... It sure does. And I don't even think Roland Howard, like, understood why people... He's like, I wrote that when I was, like, 16. Why do you... Like, why are people... I'm in his boat because I don't fucking get it. I think it's awful. But, yeah, I think well, when Howard passed away, like, Nick Cave did, just like, a... Fucking take that right there. I'm gonna take that. Yeah, I did, like, a piano uh, version of Shivers. It's actually kind of touching. Wait, when did, he, when did Roland die? 
Damn it. My notes aren't there yet. Well, he died more recently. He, he died in 09. Okay. Yeah. That was more recent. I remember when that happened. Yeah. But it sounds like, it sounds like bad, like television, but bad. You don't, you don't like uh, somebody's watching. Like I thought that was also another. I don't recall. Let me see if I can pull it up. Cause I'm not going to like scrub through yeah, the whole it, album. Uh, actually, if you check the, the the YouTube video, there should be a timestamp for the song, like in the comments, like the actual description doesn't have, I, I, uh, yeah, I was having trouble with this too, because I, YouTube is not ideal. for. Oh, this there thing. it is. There it is. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So this, somebody's watching. Are you sure? No, it's not it. So, so on that version, this, whoever uploaded this fucked it up. Those are the lengths of songs. The timestamps are in the comments. Some some Mother- good, good some good Samaritan did the actual timestamps. Is it this guy? Yeah, top one. Okay, okay. I knew that would happen. It happened to me too. Okay, somebody's watching. Oh, this one. It's kind of like a. It's not a, bad. A taste of what would come. It's not like, uh, like a little taste of chaos. It's, it, but it's so like, man, it's easy on the ears in all the bad ways. The thing is, it's it's like again, I, I'm shitting on it, but it's not bad. Like if you like any of that, you know, television, the Clash kind of stuff, you probably won't hate this. And I like that stuff, but uh, I'm not a fanboy of that type of music. So this doesn't do anything for me. Like the writing of this fucking does not do it for me. But I'm gonna say myself, great main riff, great main riff. Uh, and that position is like this weird circusy waltz kind of thing. Real good, interesting. For the most part, the reason why I, I, I it's a no, a no brainer worse is because of how little it does stylistically. It does nothing. It's just that one mode. We're gonna be television, and we're not gonna we're not that good I, at writers because we're fucking kids. I think if like LCD sound system or someone like that did like the voice or uh, after fashion I fucking hate the voice so much. I think so they, much. Yeah. They're dancey. They're dancey. But and Nick Cave's voice at this stage, he's but a boy. He's a boy here. He's just doing his best to sing. Mm-hmm. He's doing nothing interesting. And he's not a he's not a naturally gifted vocalist. He's got a really cool sounding voice, though, but he's not a good singer. He like nowadays he's a lot better because he's mm-hmm. been doing it for years and you could tell he could you could really tell he's been working at it in training, uh, but at this stage he's just a drugged up kid and uh, I don't like it at all. I'm okay with it not being on streaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay I, with that. Whoever owns the rights to this album, I would buy the shit out of it. God damn! I didn't man. I was expecting to disagree this this viciously out the gate. <laughs> Fuck. Well, you know. <laughs> Okay, we let can us, move on. Let Other us move things. on to the. This is a combination of the Hee Haw EP and the Birthday Party LP. Uh, Hee Haw EP was released in 1979. The Birthday Party LP was released in 1980. This compilation, which you will all find under the name Hee Haw, was released in 1989. Who gives a shit about that? This is Hee Haw. <laughs> Already love it. Yeah, this is the birthday party now. Fuck yeah. Oh, it's already twisted. This song makes me feel weird. It's like surf rock and noise and the monster mash, and even though you hate monster mash. It it sounds like actual monster music. Already, he's doing interesting stuff. It's so herky jerky. It's like, a, it's like a twisted novelty song. Yeah. And is that a is that an organ or is that a guitar? I can't even tell. I don't know. You're asking the wrong person. Yeah. Fuck, man, that's so. Cool. Uh, let's just let the chorus go. It's so melodic too. It's weird and off, but still really pretty. Okay, 
God damn, this is real good. Real good stuff for uh e well, that's was off, off the birthday party album. Yeah. So and they were still called the boys next door. Yeah, they were still called the boys next door at this stage. Uh already was, a thousand percent kookier. So yeah, that song is crazy. And then Although I, I'm gonna assume you you hate songs like Happy Birthday. No, love Happy Birthday. Okay, love it. Let's do yeah. that song. Because uh, to me, that's like a good uh, Happy Birthday and the hair shirt. The hair shirt is fucking amazing. Those are like way better, like blends of noise and dance music to me. Oh, for sure. Like uh, in the hair shirt, Cave is doing like these fucking pterodactyl streaks, like. Ah! I can't even do it. I can't do it. Yeah. I have to like really try. Uh, it's it's like um, Roger Waters used to do it a lot in mm. Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd. Uh, like, ah! like it's fucking okay. shrieky stuff. Uh, he's he's going ape shit. He's already going crazy. Uh, the songwriting is now real it's crazy. Now. It's weird now because like like the opening track, it's pretty, but it's just something off. Of everything everything about this, there's something off, and even when there's like a really straightforward, straightforward bassline, like like hats on wrong, straightforward, strong, consistent bassline. Everything you know funny. Everything else in the song is going haywire. I wrote that down too. Like the really the um bass and drums could really be in like any like eighties new wave band, mm. but then there's like this crazy like free free jazz like freak out element to it. Yeah. Like both guitars are, are doing their own fucking thing. They're really feedbacky, really scratchy. Uh, and cave is losing his fucking mind. Like, man, it's, it's way more energetic. The drums are always like really spastic, mm -hmm. really snappy too. Uh, and the vocals like cave is already wild, whaley, psychotic. Yep. And it's so interesting. This, and, and really, it's it's actually pretty in a really uncomfortable way. Yeah, that's kind of uh, like Nick Cave's career, though, is that it's pretty in a very uncomfortable way. Yeah, very uncomfortable, man. Uh, Waving My Arms, that's just straightforward catchy. Like, you, that is a mm -hmm. good regular rock song. It's not regular. In the, I mean, I can't call anything they do regular. But for what they do, that's pretty regular. Um, I think Riddle House encompassing, encompasses everything great about this album. Like that one song, you listen to that one song, and if you like that song, that's like yeah. it's, it's this whole style nailed. Put on, put on Riddle House. Fuck, man, that's oh, I'm just, wait. Also, also, I think this stuff is more accessible for sure. Hell yeah. That fucking spooky ass guitar line. It's funny we did. The Dead Kennedys last week. Yeah. And then... Very uh, reminiscent. Yeah, because they both take, like, surf rock and or, like, rockabilly and, like, twist it. Oh, yeah, to make it creepy. Or, like, cool, because I don't think rockabilly is cool, but... I don't like it at all. I don't. I don't. But, yeah, it's <laughs> like both these bands use, like, elements of that and use it to their advantage and, yeah. in a way I don't know if many other artists have. Mm -hmm. Uh. I think Catman is the weakest song in here by far. And I don't, uh, the Red Clock isn't a bad song, but I don't care for it. Um, I will say, because this is the first we hear of it for the most part, uh, Roland is <clears throat> one of the worst fucking singers of all time. He's awful. He's, yeah. He's so bad. And he sings a lot, well, not a lot, but periodically on this album and the next album, he stops at some point, mm -hmm. which is good stuff. Like it, like it when he stops singing. He's so bad. He's so bad. And, uh, it's, uh, it's like even more tone deaf Lou Reed uh. it, it does nothing does nothing for me especially when you have Nick Cave losing his fucking mm. mind and you want more of that you yeah. want more Nick Cave yeah Ro Roland should you know back up or a few words here and there at best it's yeah, not yeah. a good singing voice no no but the man I will say the man's got like a crazy interesting career post birthday party I don't know much about it. He did like, uh, I believe it's called crime and s no, I'm not going to say it and make a fool out of myself. <laughs> I'm going to look this up. Damn. We almost uh, had you. Um, but like he did stuff with, uh, Lydia Lynch. Oh, Lydia lunch, lunch, whatever. And she, uh, man, I like her first band. Was it <clears throat> teenage Jesus and the jerks? I think she's a fucking hack. 
damn, just shitting all over. I like over her. I, I like her, but all, I, I think uh, she's accidentally good. I don't think she's she's ever done anything intentionally and it worked out. So, yeah. Fight cr- me. <laughs> crime in the city solution. Okay. And these immortal soils. Uh, and then, like, the solo stuff are, like, him and Lydia covered, like, Alex Cooper's Black Juju, which is a good fun. ass song. It's a great song. Yeah, I'm talking shit. I don't, I don't know enough about Lydia Lunch. I know her band. I like Teenage Jesus and the Jerks, but it's, they're a No Wave band. You know uh, anything about No Wave? <sighs> it was, sounds familiar. It's a, it was a, maybe briefly. This arty art scene in New York in the late 70s, early 80s that was like a branch of, it branched off from punk. And uh, there's a really, really good No Wave compilation called No New York. It is the definitive No Wave starting point. It has bands like the Contortionist, uh, Teenage Jesus and the Jerks, like I said, uh, DNA. Uh, there's probably there's another one on there. It's real abrasive, real birthday party esque, but less musical, less good, less talented. Some of them are really, <laughs> really fucking talented. Okay, purpose purposely playing badly. Okay, it's that kind of shit. They're all high as fuck. Sure. So she was in that scene. Okay. Um, but anyway, this album, more, I would say. Out of all the birthday party albums, this is the one that makes me feel the most things. Mm-hmm. These songs are really dark. They're really dark and uncomfortable. I think because it's kind of like a compilation of two shorter things. Like it's still real good. But it's still good. I, I I do get the like it's I mean it's a disjointed sounding band by nature. It's the it's the but it's the writing. The actual songs, they're re, they're not quite melancholy, but they're they're just like gross. Mm-hmm. Like I feel ugly when listening. Like I like it a lot. It's mm-hmm. still really melodic, but it's just like, fuck man, these are depressing me. These are fucking depressing me. <laughs> to me, the, the, like the lyrics are this so abstract. Sometimes yeah. a lot of LSD like, going on or yeah. Like no way these guys didn't listen to beef heart. Oh yeah. There's no, I, w- I was like, not going to talk about beef heart on this episode. Dude, not going to do it. We did. I think we went a while is, without talking. We, yeah. We haven't talked about beef heart in a while. Episode 10. Please check that out. He's the best dude. He's a fuck. You're wrong, Alex. He's yeah, the that, best. It's, and it's so weird that I can like listen to the birthday party, but I'm like, uh, beef heart. I'm, uh, I'm not sold a hundred percent on him, but I am heavily, heavily influenced yeah. by that man for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right. So good album. I would say this is like a safe place to start with the birthday it is, party. It is a safe place yeah. to start. So where are we at now? Now we are in 1981. Am I saying it right? Prayers on fire. Prayers on fire. Prayers on fire. Yeah. Nick Cave actually doesn't like this song. Really? Yeah. I fucking love it. Oh, I'm excited. So much crazier. I think it sets a good, good tone for the rest of the album. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is fucking bananas. Oh, with, okay. Fuck, man. Because yeah, if you're not on board with that, it's it's only gets crazy. This album, it. best album, best personal favorite. Best personal favorite. Yep, dude. I had my opinions changed going to this. This was not my best for my whole life, mm. and I went back and I was like, "Fuck, dude, this is it's so." Beginning to end, every song is a new form of insanity. Yeah. Going into it, I'm like, well, I may split those two things up. Uh, It's really only going to one of two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And then even though I've listened to the albums before, I this when I came back to it, I just felt more strongly about this album than any other. So this is one of the most insane albums ever. It's like there's so many ways to describe all the places they go, but the way I've kind of boiled it down down to this album is the audio equivalent of rabies. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, man, there's so much going on 
Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Fuck. Dude. At all, um, every like you can name a song, and there's a thing to talk about. Yeah, it's so like, man, dude. Okay, it's, what in God's name is Cave doing in capers, dude? <laughs> what are my vocals. notes for capers? I'm so confused why anyone would sit down and be like, "Let's record a song that sounds like this." Yeah, to think that I've never heard anyone try to sing like that. It. Uh, put it on. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a like a King Diamond. Uh, I got a shit voice, but way weirder. It's a weird song to willingly say, "Hey, we're gonna put this on an album." And it's track three. It's right at the fucking yeah. beginning. Already very circusy. Can't wait for these vocals. <laughs> yeah, it's already in my head. Yeah. <laughs> wait for it. It's like waiting for like a good joke. <laughs> oh, fuck. What is that? What is that? I mean, already. Oh, it's so fucking weird. Already, like the music is questionable or suspect, and then, <laughs> and then they throw those vocals in. Just like, what the fuck? You know what I thought of a lot is, um, like old timey, like cartoons or like big jazz bands, yeah. like. I'm like in a perfect world. Some of these, some of these songs would be on the Cuphead soundtrack. Oh yeah, because yeah. Cuphead also has that weird like juxtaposition of like some nice old timey things, but it's really fucked up. Yeah, it's twisted. Which is a, it's a very hard video game for very those who don't. And the music is great, and they fantastic. invoke like the the old like 1930s style. Yeah, cartoon. And then yeah, I get some of like that that big band 1930s yeah. vibe on this, this album. Yeah, this is like. It's like big band jazzy stuff, but schizophrenic. <laughs> like it's, it, it it has like it it it's reminiscent of it. They're playing things like it in the style, like especially Phil, the drummer. He, I think his his beats. Are, I've always really liked his drum beats. They're really really creative. Here, I think they're the strongest. Mm. They're every song is very interesting, very jazzy, very jazzy. But then, well, I mean, this is the last album you, you get them too. No, he's on the next one a little bit, a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. Everything the way it's produced too, like the guitars are like they're they're not really they're both they're doing everything and nothing. Like they're doing shit, but they're so spastic. Everything mm. about it is spastic. Um yeah, this was like a direct um reaction to their disappointment of moving from Australia to London because there's not really a music scene in Australia. It's cut off from the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go to London. It'll be better there. And it wasn't people wanted them to be a new wave band. Yeah. And their shows were just getting like violent. Oh, it, Nick Cave literally kicked people in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this album more accurately represents their their live shows that were going on. And then, yeah, everyone's on fucking drugs. And it's real intense. And this is Kate. Okay, so I, I really fucking adore these songs in this album, but I can't tell you or a listener why it's enjoyable because it's it's it, logically it, not. It's actually it, really fucking ugly and scary. I think. It's also funny on like um, Nick the Stripper and King Inc., yeah. which King Inc. is one of the oh, like incredible best birthday party songs. Fuck yeah. Uh, I'll play a little bit after, but like uh, there's like some Kafka esque elements in there. And I'm like, that's kind of perfect for like the birthday party, like bug people. Like, Have you ever read Metamorphosis? It's horrifying. I fuck, it's fucking great. <laughs> I fucking hate. I hate body horror. I hate uh, people turning like that kid kids movie rat or witches where the witches turn the kids into mice. I don't know that one. Fucking horrifying shit. And I don't know. I think that movie scarred me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, meta. You know, uh, references to like bug people. Yeah. On um, King Inc. Yeah, and um, uh, that that song is like what I love about it musically is how sludgy and gross it is. 
yet it some, somehow so, manages to be really, really melodic. Still has like the big band 1930s vibe to it, too. Yeah. So let's uh, a little bit of King Ink. This is one of the more popular songs for sure. Because fucking it, choke at the beginning. <laughs> fucking deserves it. That song. Yeah. This turns into Neil Hamburger. I know. Why? Crazy baseline. I definitely it's a lot of this. I know. I, I just want to get. God damn, it's cool. I want to get some horns. All right. Do those come in? Ah, I don't even remember them in the song. Because I wouldn't write that it has a big band vibe to it. If uh... Dude, I don't think the song has horns. I mean, it has a lot of it has a lot of shit going on, but it takes a while for it to kick up. Maybe uh, quiet it down and let me take a. Uh... So, uh, man, that song, uh, well, actually, no, we, we're, we're, we'll, we'll get back to that song, but, uh, another one of my favorite songs. What? Ho, ho. Oh, so I hate Roland, but I still love the song. It's so weird. It's a, like a fucking medieval Renaissance fair vibe, but yeah. still like the birthday party. Yeah. Like it's so confusing. The, like everything they do. It is, yeah. This is ho ho. That's a great guitar line. Yeah, it's. Have a glass of your finest mead. I don't know why I went 1920s news <laughs> recording. I'm so confused. It's more like <laughs> my lady. Yeah, my lady. Oh, there's Roland. Oh my god, he sucks. This could be a Velvet Underground song, too. <laughs> Don't, how dare you? That's fucking way better than Velvet Underground. Could be. Episode 17, where I shit all over them. Uh, god, so, every song is, has its own kind of unique personality, but uh, throughout the entire thing, the consistent theme is that this whole... I mean, it sounds like a bad drug trip captured perfectly to sound. That's where you get uh, just you and me. Fuck, dude, that song that's, is mentally ill as fuck. It's literally about trying to quit heroin. Really? Yeah. Like he says, uh, oh. first, like, try to kill it with, with a hammer. hammer. Thought I could lose the head. Uh, and then, yeah. It's, it's horrifying. Like, it, it's a really weird... Man, everything... I, I keep using the word weird because it's, it's hard to describe this band as anything but. That song is so good. It, it's... Every song is good. Every song. I mean, uh, I actually for, don't like Yard. Except, except for Capers. <laughs> I like Capers. I think it's stupid, but uh, Yard, I think, is hard as fuck to sit through. That song is rough, and it's long. Uh, you know, it's funny. Mm. Uh, Blender Town. Yeah. I don't know why I thought about the band Fa- Franz Ferdinand. Uh-huh. Like, I could picture them, like, doing... A version of that Ugh, or like throw up or like the boys next door. Like I could picture them doing like a more like dancey, socially acceptable. Version. It's pretty. Da- it, no, that's an accessible ass song. Actually, I think Blend Town and Kathy's Kisses are like bonus tracks. They weren't on the okay. original. Um, so it's supposed to end. I think it originally ended at just you and me, which is a mm-hmm. great closer. But Blunder Town is fucking amazing. I'm glad it's on here. Yeah. Kathy's Kisses. I can do without Kathy's Kisses. The piano sounds like. Uh, the piano on the Ghostbusters soundtrack. I'm not saying like anything. You mean the type of piano? No, like, okay. Because I saved it. I guess. That's a fucking stretch if I ever heard one, dude. This doesn't sound like anything. (laughs) You know what? You're right. I sound corrected. Oh man, that's how you make me look stupid. Yeah, like you yeah. have it cocked, waiting for me, to, waiting for me to shit on it, and then exactly. You know what? Fair enough. It's like a enough. jaunty, like it's it's got to be from some form of music because the piano, too- sure, but the rest of the song oh, no, just no, fucking no, yeah. shits all over. Yeah. It. That's a. I keep saying the word weird. I'm gonna stop. No one gonna use the word weird. But uh, what else is there to say? Figure of fun. It's how do you how do you not enjoy something that freaky? It's a freaky. It's freaky. 
I also like uh, Dull Day. Yeah, yeah. It's it that one is like it's normal compared to the rest. Yeah, but it's still spooky and strange. That's and, the one that could be on the Cuphead soundtrack. Yeah, you know what? I I feel that coming from like a boss fight. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, for sure. Uh, this thing, this album makes Hee Haw sound like fucking Duran Duran. Like it's it's so much more exaggerated. It's crazy. It's this heroin fueled 1930s jazz band. Like, uh, what song words are talking about? Like, that's, oh, can you? Uh, no, just you and me. Just you and me. Like, there's like a reference to like Joe Frazier in there. It's fucking insane. That is so weird. It, and, and Kafka, like mm-hmm. all these things. Like, what the fuck is? Yeah, and in from beginning to end, it's consistently mixing it up it's always interesting and this is like this is not an easy album for most people i would i would venture to say to listen to like to listen to this like a few times in a row you don't want to do that it's not like i did it i don't recommend it yeah exactly i did it but i did i I had like the aha moment at the on the second time really i had it like on my third i think i listened to like i mean i listened to these albums countless times in my youth but it's different when you it's much different about them yeah and I remember when I was a teenager, I listened to this one like a lot. And after like the like, uh, third or fourth listen of it, like within one day or maybe two days, I thought, I hate this. Like, I don't, I love the, I love the album, but I can't do this. And I can't do this again. Like mm-hmm. this is, these aren't re-listenable songs. They're, it's like a beautiful art project. It's like, it's like a beautiful experiment in insanity. I've it's see- hard to enjoy it musically. I feel indoctrinated. I feel like I can. I know I, it's the same. I still enjoy it. But oh, this it's not, initial. Yeah. It's not for everyone. <laughs> this fucking band isn't for everyone, but this album, I think it's their best. So do you, but it's not, it's not an, I would not start here. We're just doing real abrasive music. It's, lately. But this is like, they're legendary, man. How do you, how do you not do the birthday party? Or Nick Cave is legendary. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. That's why we're doing them. Hell yeah. So it's, it's rabies. In audio form. If you like that, then you like this good fucking album. But now we're on to the next one. This is 1982 Junkyard. <laughs> Talk about abrasive shit. Fuck yeah. What a way to st- yeah. start it. He has one time where he says blast off. It's one of the craziest screams ever recorded. Yeah, yeah. His drums, man. Oh, it's so good. This is like Zoo Music Girl, but way better. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that, actually. Okay, so no surprises here. Personal favorite. Um, I man, this was my best for my whole life. <laughs> yeah, and I went to this like, yeah, this is the I best mean, one. But it's best album art, hands down. Oh fuck yeah! It's fucking the guy who did Rat Fink. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Who? Wait, what's the, what's the guy's name? I don't know. It's Rat Fink. Okay, there actually literally is Rat Fink on the cover. Yeah, okay, like a little small version. Uh, I was dead set on this being the best. And then I had to give it to prayers because of how, uh, how stylistically all over the place it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is less crazy, but it has like a, a certain mode. Yes. It's more, uh, cohesive, mm-hmm. uh, heavily inspired by American Southern Gothic shit. Um, yeah, it's almost a concept album. Mm-hmm. Uh, so another caveat had some member chains change ups right but uh the caveat is that opening track blast off was not the original opening track that that was on the release the bat single so blast off which is the opening track on the version you'll all find uh that was originally released along with uh the song release the bats which is also on this album Mm -hmm. that was included later on uh and that those two along with a alternate version of the song dead joe they're all bonus tracks but Mm -hmm. that's the only version you'll find She's hit the following track was originally the opening track. Okay. Uh, so 
it's like a whole convoluted thing, but this is the only version you're going to find. So it doesn't matter, I guess. Also, while we're talking about convoluted shit, for some reason on Apple Music, uh, oh, six inch gold. I'm fucking furious about that. Dude. Six, six inch gold blade will play several sins yeah. instead. So on Spotify, you're good. Spotify, you're good. There is a, a live version of six inch gold blade that you could find on Apple, but I don't know who the fuck is responsible for that because Man, I thought I was losing my mind when I was listening to it on streaming because I yeah. know this album pretty well, mm-hmm. and that is, that fucking is not the song. I was like, I really like the song, and then I was listening to the lyrics. So I'm like, that's because I heard it before. Yeah, yeah. Several Sins is a good song. It's pretty. It's fairly normal for birthday party standards. And then Six Inch Gold Blade, I th- actually like more. I think, and it's not even on Apple. It's just it's, so stupid. Yeah, it's fucking but annoying. Their drummer. Uh, the previous drummer was actually fired because they said he couldn't play Dead Joe. Yeah, it was Dead Joe. Uh, and it's funny because Phil, I, I have always loved his drumming. I thought he's really inventive and he's, he's clearly a talented drummer. And then you listen to Dead Joe and I feel like I could play that beat. Yeah. And I'm not a good drummer. So I'm confused that he couldn't do it. So Mick, everyone Mick, was just too, too intoxicated. Maybe. Uh, because Mick Harvey is now playing drums for a lot of the songs, but I, I believe Phil is still playing drums on, on most of this album. Also, like uh, "Kiss Me Black" because uh, oh, one of my favorite boy. Beef Heart songs. See, this goes, hey, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, 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 yeah, and that's all very, this song is. It's it's all haze. It's all haze. This is the gravelly, Dude, hey, 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 yeah. fucking uh, Hamlet, pow, pow, pow. I love that song. It's a great song. It's it's almost metal. It's almost metal and it's really tr- not trancey. That's a, that's a bad descriptive word, but it's like hypnotic because it has this weird repetitive bass line that goes on forever and ever. And that was my first, because this was the first introduction I had to the birthday party when I was unaware that Nick Cave did anything remotely aggressive. Mm-hmm. And all I remember from like that first listen was hearing that song and Nick Cave, I was like, what the fuck is he doing? What is he doing? It's hilarious. And when he screams, uh, wherefore art thou baby face? Oh yeah. It's like this crazy psychotic shriek. He is. I was sorry. Yeah. I was talking about like the imagery of the last album and this, this one specifically on this song is like, just as crazy. It's like Shakespeare, but with like modern things like cars and yeah. Like, I th- uh, so one of my favorite things about this album is the, pro- the way it's produced is, it's the most perfect production they've ever had for mm-hmm. the band. So it's heavy on drum reverb. Drums are echoey to all hell. Vocals are right in the front. So you're hearing his streaks like front and fucking center. Uh, bass is, is, it's usually uh, pretty heavy and punchy. Um, but the guitars, I think it's specifically mix are like, they're really, really in the back, mm-hmm. really in the back, really secondary. <clears throat> but it fits so perfectly in the, the, the best uh, example of that on this album is Big Jesus Trash Can. Oh, the wild, wild in, track. Insane track. And the way it's produced is a big part of that because there's a, <clears throat> there, they did a appeal sessions. Yeah. And I listened to that one a lot too when I was younger. And the way, well, if you know the appeal sessions of anything, it's like crisp, fucking live right there next to you that they're mm-hmm. produced really really well this is not the band for that they're not they're not like they're not good for clean recordings no and i just really remember that version of big jesus trash can being so inferior because it's like there's no reverb anywhere it's it's really tight and clean here it's messy and fucking echoey and it sounds like a nightmare mm-hmm. that's beautiful uh she's hit i think is one of the most twisted ballads ever written that song's about uh, Richie hitting Lucy, right? Is it? No, I this. That's pretty. <laughs> uh, sorry. I like uh, how he starts it off. He says like something about woman pie. Woman's pie. Yeah. I'm Mr. Evangelist says she's That's like, that's like uh, something some like weirdo calls like a woman's vagina when he's like uh those people who don't want to tell their kids like it's called a vagina. So they're like, it's a hoo-ha or whatever. It's a hoo-ha. It's a... Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. 
One know? of those people. Yeah. That's a woman's pie. Yeah. Uh, I think it was before that, though. I don't think it's from reference to a vagina. I don't fucking know. These guys are I high think it shit. Is. I think it is. But the thing is, if you look at all the lyrics to that song, they make no fucking sense. None of these it's, lyrics make any fucking sense. That's, it's all abstract. She's hit is like how a hangover feels. Oh, it's it's, it's so weird. Uh, put, on, put on a little bit of she's hit. Actually, okay. it's such a good song, man. God, I really fucking love. Like I, I know all the lyrics, and they don't make any sense. And I don't learn lyrics ever. Oh. Uh. Those hardly sound like drums. Yeah, they're so big. It's fucking great. Oh man, yeah, that bass drum is gigantic. Yeah. We're never gonna get a total. No, race. it's it's a long intro, but it's like really fucking sad. <laughs> it's dark dark and it's it's ballad e but in their way in their way yeah it. yeah going back to deg show there's a lot of like deg a lot of abstract lyrics lots of wordplay uh by far way more like technical lyrics but uh i think that's my favorite birthday party lyrics when uh he says you can't tell the girls from the boys anymore ho 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 you can't yeah yeah and he's talking about the bodies in a car wreck man it's <sighs> gnarly yeah fuck man yeah so, i didn't even know that that's fucking upsetting <laughs> yeah don't this is a band filled with upsetting lyrics yeah horrific Start, imagery yeah and so the music matches it it's, yeah but it's such a rare thing yeah something about that one that one i was like Whew. it's really yeah it's pretty fucked up who hurt you nick D- dude Life that did. dude had a rough go of it yeah um dim locator is so sleazy is it it's so sleazy but the thing is the song the way it's written is fucking really 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 wearing a gold medallion mm-hmm. for sure but the way it's produced makes it fit in with the rest. Put on Dim Locator. I Just mean, that made that intro. It's so... Mm. Yeah, if you listen to the Spang, you're scumbags. Hell yeah. So. Oh, it's so great. Uh, it sounds like it was recorded in a trash can. Yeah, this whole album does. That like, song, that song, it sounds like uh, what what I think of like you would hear it at a strip club in hell. I don't. Well, to me, that one that's like a perfect strip club to me. So one in hell, yeah, for sure. Or <laughs> if I walk into the strip club and they're playing the birthday party, oh, I mean, immediately hard. Yeah, uh, for yeah, sure. yeah. Spend I'll spend money I don't have at that strip club. God damn it. Uh, I don't know. This is a, like I think the reason I ended up not feeling it was best because Cupid Doll pretty weak. Cupid uh, Doll is weak. Don't care for it. Um, and even I don't know. Even like a several sins. I like it, but I don't love it. Uh, I think I love it. Really? Yeah, I think that the the trickery got me for some, the really the two times. Really? Yeah, maybe because at first I didn't like write anything about it, and then the second time. I was like, hey. It's a good song. No, it's yeah. a real good song. Uh, but also, this version has, you know, a second Dead Joe, which is, it's not identical to the, to the original, but it's... It's nothing, called for. Yeah, there's nothing very different about it. And and then it's also before Release the Bats, which is like stupid placement, because like, mm-hmm. we're listening to a song we've already heard, and then we're going to get to a, a different... Like, I don't know. It seems stupid. Uh but release the bats. It's it's like I think it's that's their most famous song. For yeah, sure. to me it's a a weird. The v- fucking lyrics are almost like a parody of goth. Oh, it's sex like, vampire bat, goth yeah. sex vampire bat. They're like making fun of dancing. Pretty much, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it, it kind of peters out toward the end. Uh, the highs I think are, are the highest they've ever been. They're 
like I think yeah I, I, the best songs in here I think are are better than anything off prayers mm. but as a whole unit prayers just does more things yeah prayers yeah. is an easier start to finish listen however I think this one is easier to listen to like in terms of it being pleasant this is interesting it's like where the last one was, I said, like an experiment in insanity. This one is more musical. This one yeah. is like an album. This You could listen to this as a band. It's fucking weird and crazy and really dirty. Yeah. But it's music. I mean, really, what we're trying to do is insane. Like, trying to... Like, to me, outside of Beefheart, this is like the craziest... It's pretty crazy. ...band we've done. Trying to put, like, words and descriptions to it. Yeah. We're using... uh unorthodox adjectives like schizophrenic and rabies to describe this music so and it sounds like a hangover like yeah 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 it's it, it, it's you cannot put it in a box and that's why i fucking love it so much and best of all the, howard or roland roland howard only sings like the chorus to several sins and that's mm. it in the whole album he doesn't do much thanks christ it doesn't even sound that bad on there either. even though i like I like his uh, career as a whole. Uh, I agree with you that uh, him less. Like, I'm not saying he can't, just less. Like, yeah. uh, like if he was in a band with Bob Mould from Husker Du, <laughs> he's like, you're only getting 30... 40% writing credit? 30%, yeah. 30%, he needed a Bob Mould. Yeah, yeah. So keep him in place. Yeah. Uh, I feel like at, at a certain point in the future, I'm, I'm going to change my mind and this is going to be my best again. I but, guess, yeah. But at the moment, this is still my favorite. But, you know, at the time of this recording, I do think Prayers on Fire is a, is a more interesting beginning to end album. But still, if you have any interest in this band, for fucking sure, mm -hmm. this is the one or one of the ones. Whatever. Okay. Where are we at? Now, last we're one coming to another compilation that was released in 1989. Uh, Mutiny, the Bad Seeds EP, but both of these were released in 1983. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so so technically I, a year later. Yeah, and uh, I think this is not on streaming, but no, on their greatest hits. If you want to call them hits, yeah. uh, there are a few songs There's on some, there. Yeah. So let's get it rolling. Hands up! Who wants to die? I love this song so much. Fucking great. That beat, man. What oh. a great line to start off the song, too. Hands up, who wants to die? <laughs> Fucking. <Sorry>. Have <laughs> you heard how Sonny's burning? Like some bright erotic star. Oh. Yeah, that guitar. Yeah. Love it. It's my favorite. Doing his best human torch impression. Yeah, and that guitar is not at all in the front. That is like hanging out in the background, uh, which is, I guess, uh, another so, signature of the band. So this is one of their, uh, for me, like, pros, like, I'm giving it worse, but it's not bad at all. So this, you gave this worse. I gave it this worse. I the, like. The fucking I, blasphemy. God damn it. I, I was, liked all everything start to finish but uh -huh. this this uh due to what we do the fact I, that you didn't give door door the worst and you give this the worst i hate you i like <laughs> i was pleasantly surprised by door door and there's this yeah some things that kind of drag and again i think because it's two things mashed up into one to be fair this is significantly weaker than the, the past three, like significantly. Yeah. Weaker. Yeah. Uh, it has some of their best songs, like mm -hmm. Sunny's burning. The one we just played and wild world. Fucking amazing. See, I mean, I may come around on it, but you I'm like wild world. I'm indifferent. On How it. goddamn dare you. Do you like music, Alex? No, I don't. Are like you a music. fan of music? The thing that we call music, you son of a bitch. Not a fan. You know, what, you know what else I don't care for? Don't say it. Fear of the gun. Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> and deep in the woods. Uh, it's a fear of gun and deep in the woods is actually pretty fucking bad. Yeah. I, I, it's, not, it's not bad. I it's stalkerish. I like the, the weird, the element that you're feeling. You feel washed listening to this fucking song. Mm. I don't like the song. I don't know. Like song. So to me, they feel like heroin, like they're the most like heroin sounding sounds. And it's this like 
you're in violent quicksand. And I was like thinking that, and it's just like, it's not for me. It's not bad sound writing, but those two songs, especially like back to back to me at this, like it drags and it lulls. I felt that way about uh swampland and Ple- pleasure avalanche for sure. I, I, I don't could do see that. For, I yeah. can see that. Those are fucking rough to sit through. But yeah, it's funny that like I'm listening, right? Writing my stuff and I wrote the violent quicksand thing and then I get around to Swampland and that's like the first lyrics. Oh, really? Quicksand, quicksand. Channeling it's, that fucking darkness, it's spelled, it's spelled phonetically that like oh, really? spelled weird. Like with a K-W-I-C-K or something? Something. I think there's an X in there. I'm going to oh. play Swampland a little bit. We're only getting one channel. I think it's your phone, actually. That might be my phone. I think it's your phone. Yeah, yeah but you, you get the song, though. Like, you're not yeah. lo- losing anything from the song. Um, uh, we'll fix the audio issue next time. But uh, uh, yeah, I also, Jennifer's Veil, you got you can't skip over that, how good it is. It's that song, fucking pretty as hell. It's funny. I feel like that song kind of fits the MO of the, the two songs that didn't work for me. And all three of them are together. But Jennifer's Veil vale is so strong. It's so good. Yeah. Like it pulled it pulled me out of the quicksand. Dude, that song and Wild World were like the reasons I listened to this so much when I was mm. younger. Um, <clears throat> I have it, not listened to these before. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it the first time? Yeah. Um, yeah, I listen to this one maybe more than the rest, honestly. But because because this, I I've heard a lot people a lot of people say that this is the more this is more the bad seeds than the mm-hmm. birthday party for sure. Because at, at this point, Mick and Nick, <laughs> Mick Mick Harvey and Nick Cave were doing all the writing. Yeah, um, I think Mick Harvey was on drums full time at this point, point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Roland was kind of I don't know high in the corner being mad. Uh, I don't know the story, but. But There's yeah, a lot more of Nick Cave and Mick Harvey doing all this stuff, and that's who went on to do the Bad Seeds. And the, you hear it, Nick Cave is doing a lot more singing on here, a lot more regular ass singing, not so much to the point of like door door, mm-hmm. but like in D- Jennifer's Veil right? and in Wild World, and goddamn, nearly every song, yeah, if he's not doing the crazy shrieks, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> it's far more normal. I w- as normal as this band gets i guess i was so glad when uh jumping way ahead when he started grinder man because i was right. like yeah the the crazy wild phase of his music is like over and yeah. then there's grinder man for grinder man they did two albums before he just said okay we're done uh i've only yeah. heard the first one and the first one is real fucking good i i heard the second one was less good but i haven't heard i it. like them both mm-hmm that was a. Uh, that's Nick Cave on guitar, which is like the only time ever that yeah. he's on guitar. Um, good, good albums. Uh, good album. I can't speak for the second one, but I speak- can and will. Okay, now yeah, it's can and will. Uh, Six strings of blue blood. I think went on to be a Nick Cave or Nick Cave and the Bad Seat song. That song kind of didn't work for. Are me. you serious? I fucking love that song. I love that song. Six strings. Six strings. <laughs> Come on, let's do it for you. Six strings. Sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, Say a spell has beautiful ass guitar lines. Mm-hmm. I do dig that song quite a bit. That one okay. sounds like a Nick Cave song. Okay. Like this, it does not fit in at all with birth. Like this whole thing is barely a birthday party. Guy. Yeah, I mean, if th- they weren't gonna stay together because they're this combustible forces and personality. But yeah, yeah. I think if they did, they it would be more like Nick Cave's solo career. Where it's just every album so different yeah um everything is i mean i I guess aside from the opening track way way slower everything is real slow now Mm -hmm. Uh, and the production is it's like from a objective technical standpoint it's the best production however i already gushed about the production of junkyard that being the definitive production for the band Mm -hmm. so this is a clean everything is clear there's I no guess, over I, reverb on every, anything. It sounds I, normal. Yeah, I guess there's not really reason to do that though, because the songs aren't as yeah. crazy. The songs are not nearly as crazy, but I still like it on some songs. Like, uh, 
actually I feel like I probably would have liked songs like Deep in the Woods and and uh, Pleasure Avalanche a lot more if they had with a little bit crazier sounding. Mm-hmm. It's because with everything so clear and regular, it kind of highlights the weak writing. Because these songs are pretty just written, not not interesting. I, I, That's a bad way to phrase that. I just yeah, fucked up that sentence. Like I said, I think they just get uh, lost in each other because they're kind of kind of similar. It's, well, similar how? This in like tone and like BPMs and like, yeah, yeah. So, or if they were like broken up in a different way, like between like crazier songs, yeah. But I, who am I? I think the Sunny's Burning is a very misleading intro. Yeah, that very, song. Man, yeah, that song's good. Is a uh, Muni in Heaven on the greatest hits? No, it's not. Damn, that's a or fucking wait. wacky ass closer. Let me double check. It is. It is. It is. Uh, that's like a better representation of like most of this. Yeah. Put on a little bit of that. This is the closing track. That's a great scream, but that is not. That's like the only time in the album that yeah. he does that. Yeah. So you hear like a very straightforward bass line. Cave is just kind of talking. Drums are extremely minimal because the Carvey is not primarily a drummer. Yep. It's a lot of this shit. This is this is pretty much what you're gonna hear on like the majority of it. It's, it's like that. Aside from Jennifer's Veil, which is extremely dark and melodic and really pretty, and Wild World, which I think is fucking amazing. The rest are like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Say a spell is also kind of like Jennifer's Veil, but um, good record noticeably weaker yeah and the last we're ever gonna hear of i mean they were the button heads and yeah like even like calling it the bad seeds is it's funny because um you mean birthday party are like oh, oh you mean the the bad seeds ep is kind of oh like, the, ba- the bad seed it's like a it's yeah singular. yeah it's kind of like letting like uh, Van Halen had diver down. Oh right, yeah. It's and kind that, of like hint- that's episode twenty. Fuck no, nineteen. You know what? I forgot. It's eighteen. Episode eighteen. Okay. Oh uh, shit! I'm like forgetting. But I used to know them all by heart. Anyway, there's so many now. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So that's kind of like, hey, we're not oh, getting along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because uh, if have you ever heard uh Nick Cave's or the Bad Seeds first album? Probably from from Hurdy Returnity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that one is like, it picks up right where this one leaves off and it's crazier. It's, mm-hmm. I like it a lot more. It's a great fucking album. And it's like, that should have been the last birthday party record. Yeah. And these should have been like the first Nick Cave. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's, it's way more interesting, way crazier. Um, and it's produced in a way that's, that's really interesting to the, to the madness of it. So listen to from her to eternity. That's a good ass album. Actually listen to everything by Nick Cave. Everything. He's, he's fucking yeah. really good. But, yeah, Alex, you're worst, which I don't agree with, but I do agree that it's very not great. I mean, it's good, but you know, mm. yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. So, so a few people are dead. Yeah, I remember but one the, of them. Yeah, I remember both of them actually. But go yeah, on. Yeah, Roland had. Cro- I've never seen hepatitis C described as chronic. Re- really. But he found out in 2003 he had chronic hep C, also cirrhosis of the liver. That's what oh, did him in. Yeah. Australians, man. They love to drink. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, they, I think they did like a mini reunion in like the 90s. Really? Yeah. How? Let me look that up. But yeah, they never like fully like fully got back together. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but Roland did do like backing vocals on a few, like bad seeds. songs. Oh, did he? So like, they didn't like fully hate each other. I mean, t- time apart will always make things better for the most part. But yeah, it's definitely one of those things where like, they Gee. didn't get their due until, um, until a- they weren't around anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah Like they weren't appreciated when they were there. I'm I'm surprised they weren't fucking arrested for prayers on fire. Like that's how do you go <laughs> about playing that shit? In '92, it uh, Roland, Nick Cave, and Mick Harvey joined the Bad Seeds 
and they played Wild World, Dig Show, and Nick the Stripper. That's great. That's a I'm I'm I am in favor of those songs. Also, we didn't mention his name once in the episode, which is kind of mean. Tracy Pugh, yep. the, the bass player, he's dead. <laughs> great bass lines. Amazing bass lines. And have you seen uh live footage of them playing? No, I have not. Oh boy. Oh boy. I implore everyone listening to look up. There's a few videos of the birthday party play, performing like on TV. Mm-hmm. And Tracy Pugh, this remarkable bass player. So he had a very unique style. Is he the weird mustache? Guy? Yeah. yeah. He has a fucking pedo mustache, uh, dark sunglasses, always wears a mess t-shirt, <laughs> and a cowboy hat. Cow- yeah. And a cowboy hat. He's on the cover of the greatest hits album. He's on the cover of also the like the the appeal sessions. I yeah. Believe. And this man. <laughs> so he has great bass lines. All right. We know he's he's cool. Yeah. He fucking gyrates his hips in a way that is so sexual for a band that is so should not be looked at as sexual. Oh, it's fucking hysterical. Watch videos of them. It's great. It's also, amazing. I think they recorded. Uh, I forget what two songs. Um, Wait, the, marry me, Lila light, and sometimes pleasure heads must burn. Are those the two songs? It was like for a documentary. It, Shit, never mind. It, yeah, it, two songs off the mutiny, bad seeds. EP. Never mind. Never yeah, mind. I forget. So the songs, the songs that I named were, you could find those on the Peel Sessions. I don't know how easy that is to find now, but uh, Marry Me, La La La, I think Roland went on to play that song like in his other projects. Mm-hmm. Good fucking song. Like really, really good song. Uh, I think even like regular people, regular friends of mine heard me listening to that like, oh, that's pretty good. And that's, that's fucking, that's yeah. shocking for this band. Uh, Roland sings like the second half of it and butchers it, of course. And then the other song is sometimes pleasure heads, sometimes pleasure heads must burn. Amazing fucking song, very junkyard esque. Uh, you could find a live version on on streaming, but other than that, that's kind of hard to find stuff from this band aside yeah, from just, like the three uh, albums. Yeah, just do it on YouTube if you can't find what you're looking for on a streaming music thing because all this stuff's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. If we've somehow piqued your interest. I, I know this is, here's the thing. And one thing I'm kind of confident about, even if anybody listening to this would hate this band when they heard them for sure, you're interested. Yeah. Like the way we talk about this band is only, it's oh. reserved only for way, the way we talk about beef which is like, it's so fucking crazy. You got to hear it at least once. Oh, it's a car wreck. It, absolutely. You got to see it. You got to, you got to see it. It's fascinating. Even if it's just for the novelty of like, whoa, someone made this. Yeah. At least that. We just also have to enjoy this shit because we're fucking mentally ill. That is the yep. only way. Yeah. Yep. Fucking. This going to drive around the neighborhood real slow with capers on. I don't think I'll get arrested. No, no, you should. I should. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fucking that's, that's the whole point. So to recap. My picks are what the fuck did I pick? No, it's your best I know, album. I know what you picked. I know. Best album. 1981, Prayers on Fire. Didn't go in chronological order. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Worst album. <laughs> door Door, 1979. Fuck that. No, it's not that bad. It's not good though. Alex disagrees. But I think it's just it, man, compared to the the actual band, whack. It's not representate. Not even representation. Yeah. Uh, not even all. close. Not even close. Uh, so that's my worst. Best 1981 Prayers on Fire. Uh, we Bananas. Bananas and a half. That's what that is. Personal favorite, Junkyard 1982. I uh, fucking adore it. Best personal favorite, Prayers on Fire. This very intriguing start to finish. And then worse, this due to circumstance, not even because I think it's a bad album. Uh, Mutiny, Bad Seeds, EP. The Bad Seed. Bad Sing- Seed. Yeah. Sorry, Bad Seed. Singular. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. Ah, just being thorough. So thank you so much for listening and watching. If you'd like to support us, help us out or suggest an artist you want us to bicker about and disagree about, send everything you want to member at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, share, leave comments, reviews, all the things that'll help us a lot. Mostly telling someone who you might also think who... So, hold on. Telling someone who might also enjoy fuck man i butchered that one yeah you God did. damn a lot uh, of things are being butchered my sanity quarantine that's my excuse for everything uh word of mouth is the best especially because 
we appreciate individual fans way more than like getting listens and stuff. Cause and to fuck a listen, fuck a listen. I want someone who, who cares. So gonna keep coming back. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Also because we have nothing to offer except for <laughs> our fucking bickering. So uh, do that if you would like, or if not, that's also fine. But- I disagree. Your, your friends seem to think we're very informative. Yeah. Take it. I guess my friends do too. I'll take it. And also a few strangers. I'll take that too. Uh, but uh, shout it- out to that guy who left the comment on the Celtic Frost. Celtic Frost. How Celtic you? Frost. Um, it wasn't a nasty comment. He's just like, if you guys like, was it procreation? Off the record. Uh, I don't know. He's like, if you like that, he's like, if you like that song, check out, check out this. And it was like, oh, it wasn't a nasty comment. So thank you to that guy. Amazing. YouTube is a breeding ground for uh, nastiness. However, everywhere else, we uh, seem to be doing fine, which is interesting how YouTube is just like, I don't know, like YouTube and Twitter comment sections are like, hilarious YouTube, YouTube is <laughs> awful uh, like, not even just for us I mean like for the world uh, on a side note um, like I found out I guess he would be the vi- like after we started doing this the the video game equivalent of us this guy the completionist who mm-hmm. 100% video games he made like a vi- exhausting he made like a video recently this talking about how exhausting the process is. And I, dude, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, that sounds really hard. And he, and he's like, I've been trying to do persona five, but technically to get a 100% completion, you have to beat this game 10 times and it's an RPG. So it's not, isn't like one playthrough like 50 hours at least or like a hundred like, hours. Anyway. So like, I don't really leave comments, but like, he just seemed kind of down. And I left one. I'm like, you know what, dude, I, I appreciate what you do. If something's driving you crazy for your mental health, do not do it. Take a I, break. I would even if you you put like an asterisk by it and you just called it a review, not a full. Like, yeah. And I this I said something like that. This supporting someone who creates content that I like. It helps. And there were nasty con- like, how dare you? Like this oh. man is playing video games for a living. Yeah. Like, do- have you no sympathy for like they a month? Don't fucking mongoloids online dude uh not that you're a mongoloid listening and watching uh, maybe you are. I, I don't I fucking i'm a are. mongoloid I, think- I don't give a fuck mongoloid he was a mongoloid all the call- <laughs> all the callbacks <laughs> we're doing all call that is devo episode three all Epi- call dude this, this is episode. episode 33 yeah that was episode that was 30 episodes ago that doesn't sound like a lot but it, it was 30 weeks we're young men. We're dying slowly in, in this quarantine. That's amazing to us. God damn. Well, you're a young man. I don't. I'm, you're a young man. Uh, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, we're all we're all young until we're dead. That's how I see things. That's not even a little bit true. I lied right there. Unless you're Richard Lewis, I think he's been a corpse for a while, and someone that has dude, been weakened at burning. Weakened at Bernie's. Richard Lewis looks like ass. Richard Lewis is a corpse. He's hilarious. Though. I like him a lot. Also, what the fuck are we talking about? We're just rambling. It doesn't even fucking matter. It's talking about things we like in life. Dude, why the fuck not? We're at the end of the episode. Yeah. You can turn it off. You can turn it. We've covered the birthday party. Exactly. Anyways, I'm, also, I'm also really fucking glad that we covered the birthday party. I'm just, man, because we don't get a chance to talk about Nick Cave too much because he's still active. Still alive in a very beefy, beefy discography. Hefty discography. I, I'm actually surprised I haven't heard all the albums. Or maybe I have. I don't. Honestly, I don't think I have. I might have actually. If I'm being honest. No, I haven't. I haven't heard Nocturna, which I think was not great, but uh, that's just what I hear. But I've heard most. Um, I don't know. I, I enjoy the man quite a bit. Also, while we're talking about him, uh, another, like, because I love the proposition so much. I don't, I don't remember if he wrote it, but he also did the music. Uh, with the same director, Lawless. He Law- did write Lawless it. is a fucking underrated movie. It's a good movie. Fucking Tom Hardy, LaBeouf. Yep. Uh, is Gary Oldman in it? Is he? Shit, I'm talking about how great it is. I don't even know who's in the movie, but go. I don't, I don't remember Gary Oldman in it, but go watch all the movies with Nick Cave in it. They're they're great. It's a yeah. You're right. He is in it. Uh, wait. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely in it. That's a good-ass movie. I didn't realize Jessica Chastain was in it, too. Oh, Good fucking movie. Uh, he's a uh, good writer, man. He's a good fucking writer. I'll recognize those boobs in any movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to do, uh, I used to do fucking Krav, Krav Maga, the Israeli fighting style, years ago. And 
uh, my sensei and, uh, helped well, worked with her for that fucking movie, The Debt. Like she worked with. I don't even think I've it's seen like that some flick. movie where she plays a, an Israeli informant person. I don't know, but G- he, Gal Gadot was busy. And this is this is before she got famous. Oh well, yeah. fuck her! This is like a long time ago. But oh whatever, we're, we're rambling. Spotify playlist on the birthday party. You'll also find in the description of wherever you're listening and watching and uh, everyalbumever.com. There's playlists for all the episodes. We do a lot of things for this podcast because we enjoy it. So thank you for partaking us, uh, partaking and humoring us while I fucking fumble my words. Man, my voice is uh, not you, doing good. I am. You were trying to do too many cave vocals. Probably. Even before I got here, I was already losing it. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah we were losing it in a group chat. I kind of peaked in the middle of the episode. That's my problem. I don't know how to balance insanity with serious stuff. Yeah. Anyway. One day. One day. So I am going to fucking put the axe, drop the axe. I want last song on this one. I'm not going to. Oh, yeah. So once again, thank you so much for listening and watching. I think the song I'm picking, you know, like in my my head, I was like. While you're thinking about it. uh Uh-huh. I don't know why. I have nothing to offer you people, but if you want to follow me. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm not even doing the plugs. <laughs> if you want to follow me at Instagram, and I don't even really have anything to plug. <laughs> I, I'm this, I'm, I this need validation <laughs> at Mother Puncher. Dude, I give so little shit about plugging my Instagram <laughs> that I just fucking... D- Pope just even for me, Pounder Monkey, if you want to follow my music. I just um, think it's fun to do. It is fun. I just fucking forgot. Like, who cares? I, I'm going to do it, and it's, I'm glad you reminded me. Uh, but uh, yeah, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> it's funny because people have been following it, and I keep, oh shit, thing uh, have been following, it and I forget that like I do post clips of this show on there. Like it's, it's really relevant. I should be plugging plugging it way more. Uh, but yeah, definitely follow on Instagram. So final song, I in my head I was gonna go. <clears throat> I thought I was gonna go Wild World, but yeah. Alex is lukewarm on it. So I'm gonna go. Hey man. Don't let me change it. No, I, I know which one. I, I know which one needs to be done. And that is, of course, Big Jesus Trip. Oh, Christ. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for listening. See ya.